Hello, students. I hope you're having a fantastic Friday and that you can hear me okay on the uh, computer's microphone that I'm using at the moment. Anyway, I noticed that a lot of you have, or at least a number of you, have indicated that you haven't ever used footnotes following Chicago style before. So what I'd like to do in this short video is to show you how you would do that. Now, the footnotes that I'm going to make as examples here are things that I'm just making up. I never actually wrote a book about about miniature dachshunds. So, you know, the hypothetical sources being cited here are not real things that you could find, but the format I'm going to use, you can apply to citing a book, citing, you know, like an article, citing a um, lecture, etc. So we start with a quotation here. Dr. Zarzechny said, quote, I own a miniature dachshund. So if you're quoting somebody, which if you ever quote anybody, make sure it's clear who is actually saying the quotation. Never just suddenly have a quotation inserted without any indication who's actually saying it, for one thing. But you have this quotation. So how do you have, find a footnote? Well, the program that I would recommend using and which I use is Microsoft Word. And if you start from home, you might be thinking, whoa, how do I insert a footnote? Well, at the end of this, the quotation, after the quotation marks, not before, not at the start of the sentence, but at the end, after the quotation mark, you're going to want to go to, while your cursor is there, to references. Then you click on insert footnote. That takes you down to the bottom where the footnote will be. So you go to references, insert footnote, you click that, and there you can make your little footnote. Notice the superscript number is right on the top here. Notice the footnote, unlike the main text, which is in 12-point font, the footnote is in 10-point font instead. Both your main text and your footnote should be in Times New Roman font, incidentally. And footnotes should have their first sentence indented, or first line, indented by five spaces. Just like how you indent the first line of a paragraph by five spaces, the first line of each footnote should be indented by five five spaces and only the first line, not the second lines. Each new footnote would also have its first line indented by five spaces. Now say you want to cite as a source if I wrote a chapter in a book about dogs and I that's what you're quoting. So let's say the book is um, called, let's say you're, you're quote, citing me, so we'll go with the author's name, Matthew Zarzachne. Then you want to say that, say it's a chapter on miniature dachshunds and say it is in a book called, let's see, let's go with uh, dogs, just something simple. And once again, you want to make sure that it stays in Times New Roman font. Now I'm trying to switch to Calabria there. So Matthew Zarzachny, the author's name, the title of the article, the title of the book. Then you would have, in parentheses, let's say the publisher, since I live in Ashland, Ohio, we'll just go with Ashland, and we'll pretend that it's Ashland University Press, and say the date is 2021, we'll go with the current year, and the quotation is found on page five. So if you're citing an article in a book, like you're citing one of the PDF readings on Blackboard, the author's name, the title of the article or chapter, the title of the book, the city of publication, the publisher, the year, and then you have the page. But what if you're not citing, you know, a um, article from a book, one of the PDF readings available on Blackboard, and you're instead citing one of my lectures? So let's say I had a lecture on miniature dachshunds. And let's say it was in history. Um, I'll just make up a number, 530 Taksoons in history. Let's say that's the class. And you indicate that it was a class lecture. We'll say Ashland University again, just as a sample thing. Of course, if you're one of my students from Kent State University at Stark, you would use that place instead. So you indicate the location of the school the lecture was, the city, and because the lecture videos that you have were made at different times, you don't have to put the exact date for our purposes. You could just have something like fall 2021 instead. And in this case, you wouldn't necessarily need a page number. So if you were citing the video playlists that have my various lectures, or you were citing the lecture slides, 
just doing something of this nature would be sufficient. So say you were hypothetically citing a lecture on dachshunds, which unfortunately I'm not going to do, you'd cite the author's name, the title of the lecture, the class, you indicate it's a lecture, and so forth. There are, of course, also other ways to cite, you know, lecture um, video or YouTube videos, but for our purposes, unless you're citing a YouTube video other than one of mine, follow this type of format. Now, of course, you should not just use the PDFs and the lectures. You could also use the occasional, say, relevant online source. So say I wrote an article on my website. Let's keep it as, as miniature dachshunds. I got my history and headline website. How would you cite a web source? Well, you would, again, have the author's name, the title. Then you would have the title of the website. Indicate when it was last modified. So let's say, we'll just go with April 10th, 2015. Then you'd have the URL for it, or web address. There is no such actual article currently like this, so bear that in mind. So that's an example of how you would format a website. Author's name, title of the article, name of the website, when it was last modified, when it was last published, when it was accessed, any of that kind of stuff. You could say whatever date you could find on it. You indicate the date and then the site address itself. So I'll do it one more time so you can see. Go to the end of the quotation, references, insert footnote, paragraph, first line by five spaces, back to home to make sure you're going to use Times New Roman font. And then you follow the steps that I previously showed. So basically, look at the sample references file to see specifically how you should format the sources I actually want you to use on the essays in this class. But this is, again, if you've never used Word, how you actually make the essays, how you actually make the uh, essays, how you actually make the footnotes. So I just got back from the Ashland County Fair as I'm making this, and just after reading my emails, thought I'd put this together for you guys. All right, well, I hope you found this helpful. And good luck on your essay assignments in our class. I'm now going to do a, a virtual boxing simulation on one of my video games. All right, take care, everybody.